Okay, let's go ahead and get started uh, covering what we're going to cover today. This is class two of uh, Game Programming Foundations 1. And today we're going to continue on where we left off before, talk a little more about the, uh, um, the, how the computer works, a little more about memory, and then we're going to get started on some programming stuff, some actual programming language things. Uh, now, the first thing uh, that I want to do today is do a quick review of what we did last time. And so, uh, if you remember last time we were talking about how the computer works. So I'm going to switch over to the document camera here uh, just for a second. And then we're going to go through that quickly. So last time we had this uh, idea of the computer works in this really kind of simple way. And that starts with kind of this bank of memory cells. And each one of them can be thought of kind of like a little box. And each box in that kind of group of memory cells can basically just hold a number. And those numbers are in the range 0 to 255. And that's the only possible thing that you can store in those is numbers. And really, behind the scenes, remember, the numbers are just stored as kind of these bit patterns, which we'll talk about in a second. But the idea is that somebody at some point created this device, and you just stick numbers in there as long as they weren't above 255. So 200, uh, 1, 14, 33, whatever. It's just a bunch of numbers stored in there. And then somebody had the bright idea of like, well, if we can make a machine that stores numbers, can I make a machine that does things with numbers like we would like to do with them? And that's the CPU. That's what the processor does. And so in order to connect that, we just run wires between them. And then each memory cell has the ability to be accessed by the CPU. And there's kind of like this little door you can think of it as. It's really just another set of switches that allows the data to flow out onto those wires to get to the, from the memory to the CPU or from the CPU to the memory. And then inside the CPU, we had a couple of uh, memory boxes as well, A and B, and those are called registers. And that's essentially what we had for our computer system from last class. The other thing we said is, well, what about things like the keyboard and the monitor and the, like in this case, like a microphone and a camera and things like that? Well, it turns out that they're just some special memory cells that have two doors, some of them that uh, essentially allow it, the memory to connect to things like a monitor. That's a really bad drawing. Or something like the keyboard. Also a bad drawing. Also a mouse or a hard drive or any number of things. So all of those other peripheral kinds of things are all connecting to some of those special uh, boxes in that um, computer system. Now, the other thing that we talked about was, well, well how, do, uh, how are those numbers actually stored? Well, each of these boxes, if you think about that, or remember what we talked about last time, think of it as a set of four switches, or a set of eight switches, I mean. You can think of that as two groups of four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those, since it's a switch, could be either off or on. Off would be a zero. On would be a one. And so we could put some pattern there to represent that. So for example, this box up here that has the 10 in it, we might say, well, what does that look like in memory? What does the number 10 look like in memory? Well, each of these has a place value. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And it's pretty easy to see the pattern there. It just starts with 1's place, just like uh, 10 uh, does. Um, and bear with me, because there is a, a, a cat roaming around here causing trouble. So if you hear noises, or it might even jump in the frame here uh, while I'm trying to work. Um, but uh, if that happens, just bear with me and we'll, I'll move the cat away from the problem area. But I noticed the cat is taking interest in the pen on the paper here. So anyway, uh, it starts with one, just like the ones placed in base 10, but then it just doubles every time rather than multiplying by 10 every time. That's because it's base two. We multiply by two to get to there. Two to get to there, two to get to there. 
So it's easy to reconstruct that. So what would the number 10 look like? Well, a 10 is not going to have a 128 in it. It's not going to have a 64. It's not going to have a 32 or 16, but it is going to have an 8. It's not going to have a 4. It'll have a 2. It won't have a 1. So 8 plus 2. So we have an 8. 8 plus 2 equal 10. So that's what the 10 would look like in memory. And so that's what we talked about uh, last class. We also talked about the instructions that are in the CPU are really simple instructions. So the CPU instructions are all just simple things that we could do ourselves. Uh, for example, the and really there's just specialized circuitry built into the processor that takes a pattern of bits, another pattern of bits, and produces a resulting pattern of bits. Or it takes a uh, something like the instruction causes uh, the CPU to go out over these wires and get a memory box from a certain location and then pull it into a register inside the CPU. But it's really all, it's not really a brain. It doesn't do any thinking. It just is a machine that uh, deterministically carries out a set of actions that cause it to produce the result that's uh, hardwired into the processor. And the instructions in there are really simple. They're things like move, to move a number from memory to the CPU or from the CPU to memory. There's add, there's subtract, there's multiply, there's divide, there's compare, and then there's some specialized versions of those as well uh, that are out there. Uh, but really, that's all that the CPU does is some form of one of these really simple instructions. That's all that it, and how does it do those? It just has some hardwired circuitry in here that either move the switch pattern from one place to another place, or take one, one pattern, another pattern, add them together to produce a resulting pattern. And there really is there's not any uh, magic behind it. There's no intelligence behind it. It's just a machine that does, just like these little machines hold whatever switch pattern we put in them, these ones can take, like the add machine can take two uh, switch patterns. Here's one number, here's another number produce the resulting pattern that would result if we added them together. And all of that is done in binary, just like this is. So that's where we finished up last time. Uh, we're going to add a little bit to that. So let's go and switch back to the, uh, the slides here. So we're going to talk about uh, hexadecimal numbers and uh, kind of the terminology related to memory. And then we're going to finish up here with talking about how programming languages work. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, continue on here. So last time we discussed how computers work. Let's review. We just did that. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so to kind of summarize those number systems, we have decimal, which is what we're used to using, like the number 10 we just saw in that uh, paper, or the number 123, or uh, if you look down here, the number 36 on the bottom corner of the slide. Those are all base 10 numbers. Those are uh, used by humans. You, you were taught those in preschool and kindergarten and you learned how to do basic math with them. Uh, maybe you did a lot, done a lot of stuff with them. So you're familiar with it because you're taught to use it and you get a lot of practice using it. Uh, when you go to the store, when you uh, kind of look at your bank account, you're just used to using base 10. And that's why it seems easier to you because you're familiar with it. Now binary is base two, meaning that the place values rather than multiplying by, multiplying by 10, as we go across the different place values, they multiply by two, but it's the same concept. The numbers work the same. They're just base two instead of base 10. And those are used inside the computer's memory and inside of the uh, CPU when it does the arithmetic operations, a part of the CPU called the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, when it does arithmetic, it uses those base two numbers. And the reason for that, as we talked about before, is because really inside of the memory or inside of the processor, it's storing things as, is this transistor or transistors like a switch, is it off or is it on? Is the voltage low or is it high? And so that's a really easy thing to represent, uh, is off and on inside of a machine made out of little switches, little transistors. And so that's why base two is used inside of um, computer systems. Okay, now, Number systems, uh, last time we looked at converting from binary to decimal. We kind of just did that on that paper with that number 10. Uh, and the process for converting from binary to decimal is relatively straightforward. We basically just 
write out the place value for each binary digit. We sum up all of those place values uh, with that have a binary digit of one. So any of them that have a binary digit of one, we add that place value and sum all of them. And then the resulting sum is the decimal equivalent of that uh, binary number. And just to show that, uh, let's go back uh, to the document camera and try one more of those. Okay, so back to the paper. Actually, let me get a new sheet of paper to try this on. And we'll do a quick uh, example here. And let me kind of do what I've been doing where I number these. So if you look at the video and need to fast forward or rewind, you can see that number in the upper right corner. So that was page one we just came from. I'll take that one off and we'll go to page two. Okay, so let's do a, a quick example of converting from uh, binary uh, to decimal. So I'll label this. This is page two. Binary to decimal. All right, so I'm going to put a binary number here. Let's say one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. Okay, so there's my binary number, and notice it's got eight positions. They're representing the eight switches of this uh, space in memory. And let's go ahead and write the place values uh, over those. So I'll use a different color for that. So this is the ones place, as always. That's going to be two, four, eight. Now, I've seen people write six there because you like two, four, six, but they double every time. So eight, 16, 32, 64. 128. So there are my place values. And so now uh, what we need to do is just add up uh, all of the ones that have a 1 in them. So notice that we have a 1 in the 128 space. So this is going to be 128 plus, and then moving on here, there's an 8. There's no 64s, no 32s, no 16s. So we can just ignore those. Those are zeros. But there's 1 8 plus and one, two, so two. So we add those up and that's gonna give our decimal equivalent. So adding these up, uh, 128 plus eight plus two, well eight plus two is 10. So 128 plus 10, 138. So this number here in binary is 138 in decimal. Okay, so we know how to do that. Now let's switch back to the uh, presentation for just a second. All right, so what about converting from decimal to binary? So we know how to do binary to decimal, but decimal to bi binary seems like it might be a little more difficult because we're going the opposite direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, look at how to do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, we're gonna use that number we had last time and do that, but let's go ahead and go to the next uh, page here. So converting from decimal to binary, notice it looks a little more complicated, but it's really not. So we're going to write out the place value slots for each binary digit. But we're not going to fill them in with a zero or one yet. We're just going to put like a little place holder there, like a underscore, like I had on the page before. And then I'm going to start at the leftmost binary place value, the one that's uh, kind of the largest number that's less than the number that we're starting with. Any of them that are bigger than that are zero, as we'll see. You could also just start at the largest one and work your way down. And then the idea is if the place value that we're on is greater than or equal to the number that we're trying to convert, then we write a one in that place. And then we subtract that from the number that we had started with, the number, our working number. Because we've accounted for that with a one, we take that out. And then we go to the next place value. Uh, and we just continue until we get all of the place values done, and then at the end we're done with that. So let's do an example with that 138 that we just did. So let's switch back over uh, there for just a second here. All right, so here's what we did before, 138. So let's do that example. I'll do that on the next page. So we're not tempted to look at our answer that we have here. Okay, so there's our new page. So we're going to start with a 138. So I'm going to write the, so this is going to be, actually let me, uh, for completeness, go and put the page number. This is three. And this is a decimal to binary. Okay. 
And what I want to do here uh, in this decimal binary is start out with that 138 that we had before. So 138. So that's the number I'm starting with. So we said the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write down all of the place values uh, as, but I'm not going to put a zero or one in there. I'm just going to put like an underscore. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to go ahead and above those write the place values. So as a convenient reference here, so one, two, four, eight, nine, 32, 64, 128. There's our place value. And the thing about this is we need to find what pattern of ones and zeros do we plug in here to, that results in when we add them up, they come to 138. Well, we could do this a number of ways. We could do it like just randomly guess and then check to see if we're right. But there's a smarter way to do that. And that way is what was outlined in the uh, over here in the uh, kind of the conversion kind of algorithm that we laid out there. But let's just uh, look at this and see if we can figure out uh, how to do that. So the idea here is we'll start at the top. 128 is 128 it, or is 138 bigger than 128? In other words, can a 128 fit into 138? And the answer is yes, it can, because 128 is smaller than or equal to 138. So because one of these will fit into that, let's put a one in that spot and say, hey, there has to be one 128 because it fit in that. But now that I've put a one in this spot, then I have to say, well, I've accounted for 128 of those. So I've accounted for 128 of these things because I put a 1 there because that means 128. So I'm going to take that out of that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say minus 128. And now when I subtract that, that leaves 10 of these left. So I've accounted for 128 of the 138. There are only 10 left. So now I go down to the next digit, 64. Can a 64 fit into 10? No, it can't. 64 is too big. So we put a zero in that spot and we go to the next uh, digit. 32, can a 32 fit into a 10? No. Can a 16 fit into a 10? No. Can an eight fit into a 10? Yes, it can. Eight is smaller than or equal to that, so we can account for an eight. But if I've accounted for that eight, I have to subtract it out of this, which leaves me with just two. There are only two left over, so a four cannot fit into two, but a two certainly can fit into two. So we account for that one minus two, we end up with zero. And then there are no, there's nothing left, so that's zero. So one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. And non-coincidentally, that matches what we had over on the previous uh, page. One, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. And so now we have this way to convert uh, from decimal to binary. All right, let's do one other example uh, of this conversion where we don't know what it looks like to start with. So this would be page four. All right, so this is going to be decimal to binary. And I'm going to pick, uh, let's pick 155. So this is still decimal to binary, 155. We don't know what the pattern for that looks like. So let's put the, our little digit uh, positions on there. And let's go ahead and write the place value. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. All right, so let's do this. So start at the top, 128. Does 128 fit into 155? Yes, it does. How many does that leave? That's a one. So we have to, we've accounted for that one. So let's take it out of the 155. So minus 128. And if it helps, you can just do this kind of uh, in the longhand kind of way. So, or you could say 128 to 138 to 148. And then we're at 48, 
So we're at 20 right now. So 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. So we had 27 there. Or we could do this kind of more the longhand way and say, okay, well, 5 minus 8, we can't do that. We have to borrow from that. So that becomes 15. Uh, this becomes 4. So 15 minus 8 is 7. And now we have 4 minus 2 is 2, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, so 27. So there's our 27 uh, that are left to deal with. So we have 27 left. A 64 cannot fit into that. A 32 cannot, but a 16 can. So we have to account for that. So minus 16. All right, so the difference between that, 7 minus 6 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. We've got 11 left over. An 8 can definitely fit into that. So 11 minus 8 leaves uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that leaves 3 left over. So a 4 cannot fit into 3, but a 2 can. So minus 2. That leaves 1 left over. There's our 1. Minus 1 leaves 0. Now if you get to the bottom of this and this thing is not 0, you've done something horribly wrong. So just that's kind of a way to check yourself is that if you get down here and you have something left over and you're all the way here, then you've messed up something up here. Or if you wind up with like a negative number somehow, then you've definitely messed something up. So in other words, uh, this number, 155, and let's kind of summarize this, 155 in decimal is equal to 100, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in binary. Okay, so now we have a way to do that conversion. So we looked at that, uh, we looked at that example and went through the calculation. We actually did a couple examples of that. Now, a quick note about uh, the differences between decimal and binary, as we just saw them. First off, decimal is more natural for you humans because you've been taught that. Uh, binary is what's used in computers because it kind of has to be because they're composed out of uh, or built using these little tiny switches inside there. But they numerically or procedurally, they're not really that much different. In other words, uh, you can do addition with binary. You can do subtraction with binary. You just have to carry and borrow uh, based on two digits, zero and one, rather than uh, 10 digits, zero through nine. But uh, a couple of things to note is that decimal is more compact. Uh, it's a little bit easier for us to, uh, to think in because we're used to learning it, but it's also more compact, so it's easy to, easier to remember. So uh, just here, just for a second, let's switch back and notice what I mean by more compact. Notice that this took eight digits to make that number when it only took three in decimal. And notice it's also easier for us to remember like 155 or 138 than it is this string of just ones and zeros. One, zero, zero, one, one. It's at least a little easier to get lost in trying to remember these things because there's a lot more digits to remember where here there are fewer. Now, that said, that binary is really how things are stored in memory. So if we're gonna be using a computer and doing stuff in there, that can be helpful for us to know that. And notice that uh, there's another little bit of a problem with using uh, decimal and binary is binary, we have to use it on the computer because that's how it stores numbers. That's how it stores uh, information in the machine itself. But notice that the decimal will roll over and use digits, uh, a new digit. It'll go from like one digit to two when you go from nine to 10. It'll go from uh, two to three when you go from 99 to 100. But notice that the rollover to using new digits, it doesn't match up nicely onto the uh, binary uh, pattern sequence that we're looking at. For example, 9 to 10, 9 is 1001 zero, zero, one, and 10 is 1010. One, zero, one, zero. It didn't roll over to use a new bit at the kind of most significant side of the high end at the same place a decimal did. And that can make it hard to visualize uh, what a decimal number looks like in binary without converting it uh, in using that process that we just looked at. So what we would like to have is something that's kind of the best of both worlds. We'd like to have something that's more compact, like decimal, but also fits uh, very naturally onto binary. In other words, when binary goes from a certain number of bits to needing another number of bits, it 
that's where we need a new digit in this other system. And the solution for that is this other number system called hexadecimal. And what hexadecimal is, it's base 16, uh, just like we had base 10 and base 2, base 16. Um, and since it is base 16, we need 16 different possible digits. So we already have 0 through 9. But then what they decided to do with hexadecimal, we need six more. That's 10 digits there, 0 through 9. They decided to add six more, A through F. And really, they could have decided to not use A through F and use something else like, I don't know, like bunny rabbit and like, uh, like, I don't know, like a circular saw. So bunny rabbit, circular saw, magician's hat, uh, hypodermic needle, uh, garbage bag, um, like, turkey leg. They could have done that, but since A through F are something we're already that already have a sequence, something we're familiar with, they just basically said 0 through 9, and then we add A through F for those other digits. But the nice thing about that base 16 is it maps very beautifully onto uh, four bits worth of binary data. And since the memory in the computer is basically eight bits per uh, memory cell, eight switches, then basically we have two groups of four, uh, one that represent one digit and then the other digit. So we have those two groups of four that each represent uh, one hex digit. And that makes it compact like decimal. In other words, rather than using eight symbols, a bunch of zeros and ones, we can get by with two symbols. And we can represent every pattern. And the cool thing about that is it very perfectly matches up with this digit, one of these digits matches up with four bits of that data. Now, that makes it more human-friendly than binary. That also makes it more computer-friendly than decimal. So it's compact, it's easier for us to read, it's easier for us to remember, uh, but it also maps beautifully onto uh, the binary patterns that underlie it. And that, once you get used to looking at hexadecimal numbers, uh, you'll start to kind of, you'll see a hex number, and you'll see the pattern of switches that kind of underlie that. All right, so let's look at how it works. Okay, so, here are the four bit, all the four bit combinations that are possible, starting with 0, 0, 0, 0, and then the next one is 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 0, and this just goes through the binary counting sequence. And notice that the counting sequence here, it works just like it does in um, decimal. It goes from 0, the least significant bit goes to a 1. So just like in decimal, you say 0, 1, but now we can't go to a 2. So we have to roll over to the next place and then we reset that one, just like when you get to nine and you go to 10, but this rolls over because there is no two. And then when the, all those fill up, they reset and we roll to the next place. And when all those fill up, like down here, we reset them all and roll over to the next place. So really this counting sequence works exactly like it does in decimal. It's just we only are allowed two symbols rather than 10. Now, the other thing, if you want to reproduce this counting sequence is a really cool, uh, kind of trick you can use to make sure you did it right. And if you'll notice, if we were to just isolate the least significant bit here, meaning the ones place, if you notice it just, it, it's the ones place, it alternates every other one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, it does it all the way down. Now, if I look at the twos place, it alternates in groups of two. So ones place alternated in groups of one, twos place alternates in groups of two, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, all the way down. And the fours place alternates in groups of four. And the eights place alternates in groups of eight. So it's really easy to look at that and just look down those columns and make sure if you're writing it out by hand, make sure you did it right. Now, essentially what we do is we just assign, we put those in order, and we assign each of them a digit, zero through nine, and then A through F. So this pattern in memory, zero, 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 is one hex digit. Pattern, for example, let's look at nine one zero zero one. Represented is represented by the digit nine, and then we go all the way at the end where all those switches of the four are turned on. That's an F. Okay, so each uh, hex digit is a four-bit pattern, and one thing to avoid confusion. Uh, well, when you write hex numbers uh, down, and computer scientists write them, you'll they tend to have add a prefix of a zero X. In the front, and that's just because notice that the, the decimal digits are here as well. So if you have a number like 
uh, over like in our example, like four one. If you don't say that's hex, that's a different number. It's 65 in decimal, it's 4, 1 in hex. And so to, to differentiate those, we just put a 0x on the front. Or sometimes you'll see them like 4, 1 with a lowercase h at the end. Sometimes there's an ampersand h and then the number, uh, depending. But the predominant uh, standard way of doing that is putting a 0x on the front to show that it's hex. OK, so here are some examples. So zeros, all zeros is 0x, zero, 0, 0 in hex, which is 0 in decimal. But this number, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, is 4, 1 in hex. And I'll, you'll, sometimes, I, usually, when people talk about hexadecimal, they'll say just hex, uh, which means hexadecimal. It's not base 6. It's, but just, just avoid from having to say hexadecimal every time you'll hear me say hex sometimes. But that means, in computer science lingo, hexadecimal. So 0x41 hex is 65. In decimal. And this one, 0 or 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 is 9, 2. And remember, the way you can tell that is if you look at those uh, numbers, you can take the first four bits, like 1, 0, 0, 1, and that equates to a 9 in the table. And then 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 is a 2. So that's 0x92, which is 146. All right, so let's do the next one without, I should have left these covered up and then. Had you following, but one 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 zero. We look in the table. That's an e. One zero zero zero. One zero 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 is an eight. So e eight, and that's two hundred and thirty-two. If we added up those place values, and then the biggest one we can have with eight bits, one 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 one. One 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 one. Well, one 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 is f. So ff. So ff. So the numbers in hexadecimal range from 0 to FF. But notice we never needed more than two digits, and we always it's always two digits because we have this 8-bit number we're converting. And it, But in decimal, notice that the number of places kind of changes here, and we needed three in some and two in others. And that's the beauty of hex. So for I, for example, say uh, the hexadecimal number uh, 0xEF, you can think in your head, okay, E is... 1110, F is 1111. You can immediately know what that binary bit pattern looks like without having to do uh, arithmetic operations like we had to do over here. We didn't have to do any calculations to come up with that conversion as long as you know this uh, table, this conversion table like that. Okay, so that's hex numbers. Uh, get familiar with that. Uh, that's something that you're going to see used a lot, and maybe you've already seen that before. For example, if you've worked in something like Photoshop, or uh, you've done anything with web pages like HTML or CSS, you've probably seen colors represented that way. Uh, so, for example, um, the web colors are often represented using these hex things. So, for example, bright white would be FF, 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 and those correspond to the red, green, and blue components. Uh, of that color. So red is FF, that's full blast 255 mixed with the green component, full blast 255. Uh, and this should actually be 255 over here, not 256 on the slide. So just as a warning, there's a typo there. Um, and the, uh, in fact, I'm going to fix that right now because I don't like it. Okay, all fixed. All right, now, the uh, main thing to keep in mind uh, with those hexadecimal numbers that you can represent larger things, like for, like we said with colors, that's 24 total bits. But notice how easy it is to represent those and notice how easy it is to uh, think about them. So for example, if I were to tell you that it's a red, green, and blue, and the color was 00FF00, then you can immediately see Oh, I, the, the middle two uh, digits are FF. That's the green component. So you can use 0, 0, FF, 0, 0. That's bright green. Or you might say like uh, FF, 0, 0, FF. Well, that's all red, no green, all blue. That's going to be like this uh, bright purple magenta uh, color. So you notice that that's the value of using these hex uh, numbers is that 
it maps up very beautifully onto binary bit patterns with a fixed number of digits. Every digit is four bits. Okay, continuing on. Uh, conversions, uh, we just talked about that. You can look up the four bit pattern in the table either to do hex to binary or binary to hex. And we just, depends which side of this table we look at. We look at this side for converting from binary to hex, or we look at this side for converting from hex to binary. And we just write down the pattern for each of those. Now, what about decimal to hex and hex to decimal? Well, those are, are a little more complicated. And what I would suggest doing is just go through binary. So if you have a decimal number and you want to know what it is in hex, well, convert the decimal number to uh, a binary number and then represent that binary number in hexadecimal using the lookup method that we talked about here. There's a direct way to go from hex to decimal, but I think rather than complicate things with extra methods, we already have the tools we need to uh, create the uh, anything that's in decimal, we can put it in binary. Anything in binary, we can put it in hex. Anything in hex, we can put it in decimal uh, by way of binary. So we'll stick with that. All right, now here are some examples that we saw earlier. Uh, also, same copy-paste mistake here. Fix that. Okay. And moving on uh, to the next one. There's a little bit of terminology I want you to be exposed to. Uh, and that is, this is all, all deals with memory sizes. So we've already been throwing a couple of these around, but there's some new ones here as well. First, start off with a bit. A bit is a single switch in memory. It's either off or it's on. Uh, a nibble is four bits in memory. And the nice thing about that uh, kind of nibble being four bits is that's represented by a single hex, hex digit. So if we were to go back over to here, notice that 4-1. That's representing the first, the most significant nibble. This is the least significant nibble. So that's four bits. That's four bits. Now, a byte we've talked about, that's also sometimes called an octet. Uh, but a byte is eight bits in memory. A couple other definitions here. A word is two bytes, meaning 16 bits. Uh, a double word or a D word is four bytes or 32 bits. A quad word or Q word is eight bytes or 64 bits. And a paragraph uh, is generally considered to be 16 bytes or 128 bits. And then we get up into these other kind of standard sizings uh, that you've all heard and all have probably used in, uh, some, at some point or another. But kilobyte, uh, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. And one of the things about these is a kilobyte is not 1,000 bytes. It's 1,024. And the reason for that is because that's a power of 2 and it maps up, matches up nicely to how memory is organized because it's power of two, just like 256 is uh, com possible combinations in eight bits is a power of two. And just like the place values go up by powers of two, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so forth. So they made this 1024. So 1024 bytes is a kilobyte. 1024 kilobytes is a megabyte or a meg. 1,024 uh, megabytes is a gigabyte. Uh, 1,024 uh, gigabytes is a terabyte. And if you continue that process, 1,024 uh, terabytes is a petabyte. Uh, 1,024 uh, petabytes is an exabyte and so forth. And it goes up to zeta bytes and yada bytes. And really, uh, the entire size of the internet is really estimated as a couple of yacht or zeta bytes so we're not even up to having enough storage for uh yacht it in the entirety of the internet to represent yada bytes yet but the idea is that this is a whole lot of storage once you get up here and really uh even the terabytes like you probably have a terabyte drive on your uh okay you should go away now uh, have a terabyte drive uh on your laptop or your computer system, or maybe you have more than that, but that's a lot of storage uh, on there. And inside of your computer, uh, the memory, there's probably a lot of those as well. Maybe you don't have like terabyte, but there's like gigabyte levels uh, of storage inside of your, the memory of your machine, not on the hard drive. All right. Now, one of the things that's important to note is with all of that memory, how does the computer system sort it out? Has it know which memory box is which? Well, each one is represented by a unique uh, number that's just like a, a mailbox number. We call it an address. 
And most computers have a very large number of those memory locations, so every one of them has to have a unique address associated with it. So if you think about uh, something that has several gigabytes worth of memory in it, every one of those billions of uh, memory cells has a number associated with it or an address that the processor can use to access whichever one that it's interested in. So in our drawing we had earlier, we only had a few different locations in there, but the reality of it is the uh, that there are billions of those uh, on most PC level computers and they each have a unique number. That's how the processor knows which one does which thing and which thing is stored where. Okay, now one thing uh, that I would like to mention is that there's probably going to be a quiz on uh, binary numbers, hex numbers, conversions from hex to binary, binary to hex, decimal to hex. So just uh, look out for that. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back from break, uh, we're going to continue on as what we're doing. And that will be in a separate video. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop here for now. And then after break in the other video, we're going to continue on through the rest of the slides. So we will be back shortly. Uh, and we'll finish up what we're going to do today. But before you take the quiz, you might want to study what was up to this point.